Brazil is the greatest footballing nation of all time, and that is something that I can say with absolute confidence. Those five stars above their badge didn't get there by chance, after all. Naturally, to be the greatest team ever, you probably need the greatest players ever, or at the very least, you need the greatest collective group. It only makes sense. Between about 1958 and 1970, Brazil showed the world what they were made of, embarrassing nations left, right and center. Which brings us to the man of the hour. The subject of today's video was not only part of the legendary Brazilian team from that era, but he also successfully took over the reins from the legendary Carincha and outscored the great Pele in arguably Brazil's greatest ever World Cup triumph. It's pretty impressive, right? Jair Ventura Fio, more commonly known as Jairzinho. The man was strong, the man was fast, the man could dribble, and the man could score. Yet, I feel nowadays he's not talked about as much as he should be in conversations regarding brilliant Brazilians of days gone by. Until today. With that being said, how good was Jairzinho, really? Yo, what's going on guys? Really hope you're all doing well and staying safe. As always, you're gonna have to forgive me for some of my pronunciations in this video. Uh, I, you know, I'm doing my best. Also, uh, if, uh, if you don't mind. <clears throat> right, let's get into it. Born in 1944 on Christmas Day in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil didn't know it yet, but they got a pretty decent gift that day. By 13 years of age, his career in football was well underway in the youth setup of Botafogo. He doubled as a ball boy for the first team too. Adopting the right winger role, he steadily grew in stature, winning a whole host of youth championships between about 1961 and 1963. From a pretty young age, the guy is described almost unanimously as a quick, explosive player with a sublime touch and a very sharp eye for goal, as is evidenced by the clips that we have of him today, which we'll get into in a bit. But the characteristic that most people associate with the man is strength. Apparently his running power was second to none and it took several men to knock him off the ball when he got on it. Heck, the man himself once stated that FIFA awarded him the title of best body on the planet following the 1970 World Cup. Uh, as you've probably guessed by now, th there is no record of the award anywhere. Uh, but, but you know, I, I am no hater, so I'm willing to give my guy the benefit of the doubt on this one. Anyway, his preferred position should likely come as no surprise as, just like several Brazilian boys at the time, his idol was none other than Manuel Francisco dos Santos, also known as Garincha. By the time Jairzinho was ready for the Botafogo first team in 1963, Garincha was 11 years his senior, a well-established player in Botafogo's first team and a two-time World Cup champion. And Garincha's favorite position, well, you guessed it, it was on the right. You can see how this was a bit of a double-edged sword, right? Unfortunately for Jair, in his early days in the first team, he was forced to play out of position and it was evident that he wasn't having the greatest time as he failed to really get into the swing of things consistently. But as Garincha was getting up there in age and injuries were piling up, Jairzinho slowly began to replace him on the right, and by 1965, following Garincha's departure, the spot was his. A Brazilian championship in 1968, a couple states championships throughout the remainder of the 60s, and Jairzinho was cementing himself as a certified club legend and global star. He also grew out this pristine afro along the way, so I'm inclined to agree the man was a legend even without having seen him play live. In the middle of all of this, probably the main reason why he was receiving such attention on a global scale was his presence as well as his performances on the international stage. His journey with the Selecao began in 1964 at 19 years of age. However, similar to how things were at club level, there was a Garincha-sized obstacle on the right wing, meaning he was forced out of position again, usually on the left or in the center when required. This remained the case until after the 1966 World Cup, which was, unfortunately, a tournament to be forgotten by Brazil, which must have felt very odd at the time, seeing as they were coming off back-to-back -back World Cup triumphs in 1958 and 1962. Pele, who was only 25 and already thought of as the GOAT by many, was treated as such in this World Cup. Dude was kicked to hell and back in this tournament, and on one occasion, against Portugal, he was left limping around the pitch as subs weren't allowed back then. It's brutal stuff. That, coupled with Jairzinho's discomfort out of position and some uncharacteristically bad performances by Brazil, meant they were knocked out in the group stages. Many believe Brazil might have been done as a footballing powerhouse. Many of the stars from the previous World Cup triumphs were on their last legs and didn't have another World Cup in them. It looked like the glory days were coming to an end. 
And then they came right back in 1970 and won the whole thing, playing what some refer to as the most beautiful football in history. Playing in a very attacking 4-2-4, Brazil had Pele, Tostao, Rivelino and Jairzinho in attack, very arguably the greatest attacking lineup of all time. Swift, attacking, aggressive football was their speciality, and this man had an absolute blinder. Furacao da Copa, the hurricane of the World Cup. This was the name given to Jairzinho due to his insane performances in this World Cup. With 7 goals in 6 appearances, he was not only Brazil's top scorer, but he became only the second player ever to score in every match of the World Cup, including the final. The first was Alcides Kichia of Uruguay in 1950. To my knowledge, this feat has never been repeated since. Adding on to that, after Brazil's group stage match over reigning champions England, Sir Alfred Ramsey, manager of England at the time, even stated that Jairzinho was harder to mark than Pele. He stated that this man was the deciding factor in Brazil's 1-0 win. He, he did score the winning goal, so this checks out. Now, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that it is a bit misleading to simply use the phrase, this man outscored Pele. While the statement itself is true, it's dismissive of the fact that Pele scored 4 goals in this tournament and made 6 assists. There is no doubt that the great man was the mastermind here, something that's evidenced by the fact that he was named as the retrospective winner of the 1970 World Cup Golden Ball. All the same, that takes nothing away from Jairzinho. He was immaculate, and without him, I don't think it's a stretch to say that Brazil would have struggled to do as well as they did. Following the World Cup win, Jairzinho returned to Botafogo and saw out the remainder of his 20s. He didn't win much else with them, but he still managed to put in a few more iconic performances before his time with them was up. A hat-trick in a 6-0 win against bitter rivals Flamengo in 1972 stands out as an example of just that. All in all, despite being a wide player, Jairzinho went down as one of the most prolific goalscorers in Botafogo history. He hit the back of the net 186 times in 413 matches. This currently places him as the 6th highest goalscorer in the club's history. By 1974, at 30, he still had a lot to give. However, Brazil failed to repeat the back-to-back -back World Cup triumphs that they accomplished 8 years prior as Germany went on to win it all. In the same year, while seeking something new and perhaps a well-earned pay raise, he ventured out to Europe for roughly 300,000 euros, a huge chunk of change at the time. This was 1974, that's, that's a lot of dosh. His destination was Marseille, and according to the official Marseille website, along with Paulo César, another Brazilian that made the switch to the French club, they were the first ever players to have won a World Cup to play in the French top division. It's a pretty good bit of trivia, you know. And the excitement surrounding Jairzinho's arrival was justified immediately as he scored on his debut. He added a further 8 goals in his first 18 appearances, However, after just a year in France, things quickly turned sour. Apparently, in a quarterfinal match of the Coupe de France, both Jairzinho and Paulo César are said to have physically attacked the referee, an action which got them suspended and would eventually lead to them departing the club. I mean, you know, that's, that's fair enough. I, I couldn't find any footage of it, but I don't think that's within the rules. From there on, oddly enough, he made a trip over to South Africa, where he had a brief stint with Kaiser Chiefs. Brief as in three games but 7 goals in those 3 games is a pretty decent return. Over at Cruzeiro after that, he continued to do his thing and even got his hands on the coveted Copa Libertadores in 1976. The man completed football. And after that, he did a bit of hopping before eventually returning to Botafogo at 37. Now He obviously barely played, but I'm certain his presence alone likely did wonders for the younger players. And after one year back where it all began, having had a career that rivaled the greatest of the greats, he hung up his boots. And that was that. I must admit, although I obviously had heard of Jairzinho before, I knew very little about him before making this video. Rivellino, Tostao, Garincha, Mario Zagallo and of course Pele are all players that I knew a fair bit about and had heard a fair bit about just through the grapevine. But not the hurricane. I do chalk this down to me just being in my mid-twenties, not Brazilian and also having a low IQ. But still. Through this channel, I'm, I'm trying to work on that last one, just give me some time. But what I think doesn't matter. What do you think of Jairzinho and his legendary career? Think that best body award was real or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, that's all from me today. Really hope you all enjoyed. Hope you have a great day. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.